This is KGW News at 11. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers. And we start tonight with new information about a deadly hit and run that happened after a shootout with police in Kaiser. Police say a driver in a stolen car killed a woman while trying to get away from officers. Art Edwards has a look at what happened. A 47 year old man from Olympia, Washington, is accused of killing a pedestrian in Kaiser as he fled from police in a stolen SUV on Wednesday. On Friday, a Marion County grand jury indicted Sean Beck on numerous charges, including manslaughter and attempted murder. It started in Kaiser on North River Road when police made contact with two men in a stolen vehicle. Police say one opened fire before speeding off. The second man stayed and cooperated with police. 64-year-old Becky Dietzel of Salem was struck and killed in the 4400 block of North River Road in Kaiser. Rachel Washburn works in a store at the intersection where the hit and run occurred and also lives a short distance away. The first thing I heard was like pop, 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 pop. Um, and you could tell that it was coming from the north end of River Road. And I looked out my bedroom window, didn't see anything. And then there's more pop, 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 like a lot. You could tell it was more than one person and it wasn't fireworks. And then all of a sudden from my bedroom window, I saw the vehicle fly through the intersection. And then right after that, a police officer was right on his tail. Salem police got the SUV stopped at the Home Depot on Northeast Cherry, where more gunshots were fired. The vehicle could be seen with bullet holes in it. Police say the driver surrendered and was taken to Salem Health Hospital for treatment of gunshot wounds. He remains hospitalized. Six Kaiser Police Department officers are on routine administrative leave after the incident. Oregon State Police will handle the investigation going forward. Art Edwards, KGW News. Gresham police are investigating a deadly shooting that happened around 8 this morning in a parking lot at Northeast 181st and Halsey. They say it was between two men who knew each other and one of them was killed. No one has been arrested. Meantime, in Portland, neighbors are frustrated and fed up with the rise in gun violence. Police responded to a shooting early Thursday morning in northwest Portland. They found 28 bullet casings between northwest 21st and 22nd and Hoyt and Gleason. You can see in these photos some parked cars were hit. Now, police don't think anyone was hurt. A man who lives nearby and was woken up by the gunfire says something has to be done about this. Does someone need to be shot in, in the West Hills uh, for our elected officials to, to really uh, figure out how to get a handle on this gun violence or, or you know, downtown in front of the Arlington Club? I, I mean, I don't know what needs to happen, but uh, like many of my neighbors, I'm, I'm just very frustrated right now that someone can shoot, you know, 28 bullets in northwest Portland um, and uh, we don't know who did it, uh, that they weren't caught. And uh, it, it's just unclear, you know, what the follow up is going to be. More than 560 shootings have happened in Portland this year through the end of June. And to put that into perspective, there were about 260 shootings in that same time period last year. All right, let's switch gears here and talk about that forecast. It was supposed to be really hot out there this weekend, but Joe, it seems like we're much cooler still pretty muggy out there today. Exactly. If we didn't have the, the humidity out there, it would be kind of a, a pleasant afternoon. Of course, if we had a little bit more of that sunshine too, uh, Brittany. But yeah, we topped out at 82 degrees earlier this afternoon. East side of the state is where all the action was with much needed rainfall. And that's where we are seeing some of these showers and thunderstorms continue the rest of your Saturday night and into tomorrow morning. There could be some nocturnal thunderstorms that roll through uh, through parts of the Oregon Cascades. It gets really active over near John Day, basically along the Idaho Oregon border there just near Burns you're picking up some heavier cells and that's what we have been picking up here uh, the entire afternoon and evening as well heavy cells some lightning and a little bit of some hail mixed in as well in the rural part of the state west side of the mountains we're going to be seeing relatively calm conditions in terms of precipitation we do have some watches and warnings the uh, fire weather warning in effect throughout the uh, central and eastern side of the state. Meanwhile, a flash flood watch is in effect until tomorrow night because of the concerns of thunderstorms throughout that side of the state. The rainfall amounts could be intense at times, so be aware of that. Again, there some of those flash flooding uh, flash flood watches will be also uh, stick stick around until uh, Monday afternoon, Monday night. So as we look at the future cast uh, throughout the rest of your 
Saturday night and early tomorrow morning, we are going to be seeing dry conditions, a little bit more of that sunshine for tomorrow. And yeah, we didn't really see that heat wave kind of uh, come together uh, the last couple of days because of that monsoonal flow, bringing in a lot of cloud cover as well as more of uh, some clouds coming in from the Gulf of Alaska. That combined really kept us cooler, but a little bit of some heat is on the way. In fact, I kind of bumped up the temperatures uh, heading into the early part of the work week. I'll talk more about that about 10 minutes from now. All right, Joe, thank you. COVID-19 cases in Oregon continue to rise as the Delta variant spreads. You can see on this graph that there's a sharp uptick in the cases over just the past two weeks. Health officials are predicting cases and hospitalizations will continue rising through at least mid-August. That's if the rate of transmission continues. Most people getting infected are not vaccinated. And that's why there's more and more talk about the possibility of vaccine mandates. But it is complicated here in Oregon. It's the only state with a law that prevents hospitals from requiring employees to get the vaccine. Now, Governor, Governor Kate Brown is considering a special session that could reverse that law. She's also thinking about a vaccine mandate for state employees like they've done in California. We need more people to get vaccinated. There's absolutely no question about it. The city of Portland is also considering a vaccine requirement. Staff would have to show proof of vaccination or get weekly testing. Despite the ongoing pandemic, many events that were canceled or postponed in 2020 are making a comeback this summer, and that includes the Oregon International Air Show at McMinnville Airport this weekend. But of course, things are still a little different this year. Guests are able to drive in, park, and set up next to their vehicle like they would at a tailgate. People can bring their own food and drinks, and you only have to pay for one ticket per car, not per person inside the vehicle. Feels a little bit more like you got more open space. You're not crowded right next to somebody else on a bench. Also this weekend, the Washington County Fair back in full swing in Hillsboro. Admission there is free. Tomorrow is the last day for both the fair and the air show, just in case you're making some Sunday plans. And did you know each year the last Saturday of July will now officially be Portlandia Mermaid Day? Well, today it was marked with a celebration along the waterfront, keeping Portland weird with a little bit of mermaid magic. Because where there's water, there's mermaids. On Saturday, a little magic washed up near the shores of the Willamette River. The mermaids unite all of us. Mermaids up from under the sea on dry land at Tom McCall Waterfront Park. From art installations and mermaid-inspired shopping to pirate games. And face painting. Well, I sort of got to pick out the de design. I met this little mermaid soaking in the waves of wonder. What's your favorite thing about mermaids? Well, that they can swim underwater and they can breathe underwater. Like little kids and big kids, you know what I mean? It's like, oh my God, oh my God. And you know, it's a pirate, it's a mermaid. It's like, oh, it's a pirate, oh, it's a mermaid. The mermaid parade started seven years ago with a mermaid named Una. She shared a message that really resonated with Marina the mermaid and her pirate, Red the Rogue. And everything she said about us kind of being people that are half in and half out, their, their inner child, their inner mermaid, their inner fantasy creature is able to manifest <laughs> in these places. You know, and actually be more than yourself. It allows you like to come out of yourself. Yeah. Traditionally, this event was a parade, but it was canceled last year because of the pandemic. And Una always wanted to offer a festival. You know, I'll just call this another example of COVID lemonade. You know, it's definitely lemons, <laughs> but we have made the festival of her dreams today because we couldn't do our parade. Weird Portland United helped put on this seatacular spectacle totally free, bringing some magic back to the mainland where we maybe need it the most. Celebrate who you really are. Yeah. Oh, that is so Portland, and it was so much fun, I gotta say.